But the, really the most intriguing thing was something that we have done in three studies now, this one and two others, and has not been uh, looked at before, and that is we measured the amount of saturated fat in the bloodstream. Now, we've all been told that you are what you eat. In fact, every dietitian is brainwashed to think in, in his or her training that what you eat is what you get in the body. Um, but it turns out that, and, and as, you, as you've already seen today, saturated fat in the diet has been disconnected from heart disease risk in multiple large studies. But there is a grain of truth in the, the concept that saturated fat is dangerous. There is very strong data that saturated fat circulating in your blood is dangerous. What's been disconnected is dietary intake from saturated fat. And what we showed here is that for the low-carb ketogenic diet, even though they were eating three times as much saturated fat per day as this group here, these numbers came down, which is saturated fat in the triglycerides is percent, and this is the absolute amount. These reductions are much greater than these over here, which means that in spite of the fact they're eating much more saturated fat, they have less in their blood. That seems like a major paradox until you understand that we have dramatically enhanced these people's ability to burn fat for fuel. And the saturated fat becomes a high-octane fuel of the body, and they burn it up, it doesn't accumulate, and it doesn't represent risk. Turns out that a well-formulated, low-carb diet is a very effective at reducing inflammation, and inflammation has become a major target in preventing not just heart disease and diabetes, uh, but now multiple kinds, common kinds of cancer in humans, and interestingly also uh, uh, Alzheimer's disease and, and uh, late, on, late dementia in people, um, and that's getting a whole lot of attention. And to show you what the difference is between where I learned about ketosis in medical school, and that was in, as a physician in the context of ketoacidosis, which occurs in type 1 diabetics when you don't give them insulin. And ketoacidosis is way over here on this, this side in red, and the, the number for uh, ketone in the blood, the measurement is 10 units or greater. That's ketoacidosis. If you woke up this morning and had your toast and oatmeal and, and juice for breakfast, your ketones would be down here under 0.2 units, 0.2 millimolar. So a person fed carbohydrates consistently down here. A person who is in ketoacidosis up here. If you go on total starvation, you eat no calories, just have water and a vitamin pill for a couple weeks, your values would be up here in the range of five to seven millimolar. And starvation ketosis has been studied for over a century. And as long as you don't take it on too long because you're wasting lean tissue, if you don't eat protein, so ketones don't protect you from losing lean tissue unless you have protein with it. So total starvation out here is perfectly safe for up to a month or more, except that you're losing lean tissue. And lean tissue means you're losing structure and you're losing strength and function.